Uh, we have, we, are, we seem like we have a quorum. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Mendoza? Here. Stone? Chair? I mean Jackson? Here. Leno? Here. Mitchell? We have a quorum. Wonderful. We have a quorum. And we do have um, our signing list, and I believe the first person to sign it was Senator Labor, and she is here. Please, Senator Labor, step forward. Just to let everybody know the, that uh, SB 1245 was pulled. Uh, that's Anderson's, uh, Senator Anderson's bill. Senator Deva, please proceed. Very good. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, members. I would first like to thank um, the, both the chair and the committee for your very thoughtful work on this issue. It is much appreciated. Senate Bill 878 will create certainty for workers and employers alike by giving employees adequate advance notice of their schedule so that they may better plan their lives. This bill is simply about an employee knowing the schedule with adequate notice, not about controlling the schedule. The employer still retains full control over when and for how long an employee will work. As many of you know, I started my career at an Alpha Beta grocery store. I worked uh, as a courtesy clerk and then as a checker and then as a person in charge. So I have knowledge of how the scheduling works. After working in the stores, I then went on to work for my local union and represent the members who work at that store. And during that time, the schedule went up about two days before we were actually required to start work. It went up on a Friday or a Saturday, and on Mondays is when we would know what our schedule was going to be. Uh, it made it very difficult to plan my life. I was going to school at the time. Uh, at one point, I had children, and it made it difficult with childcare, not knowing when I was actually going to work. This happens after members have, or after workers have already been they've hired a babysitter, made plans to be away from their responsibilities at home, and have budgeted a certain amount for the hours that their employer has originally scheduled them to work so that they can pay their bills and make ends meet. Clearly, last-minute changes to a person's work schedule not only impacts their ability to care for their family's responsibilities, but they also make their own personal budgets unreliable and erratic. A reliable schedule allows an employee to plan for family obligations, attend school, and better plan their budget. Over the last few weeks and months, my staff and I have held numerous meetings with the employer community, both individually and as a group, to attempt to address their concerns. For example, in regards to the small modification pay that an employee, employer would pay when they change an employee's schedule last minute, we exempted employers in the following circumstances catastrophic weather events, public utility failures, threats to employees or property, when two employees independently swap shifts, shifts, and when an employee who was previously scheduled calls in sick to work. At the end of the day, reliable schedules mean reliable paychecks, which in turn mean more stable families and communities across California. Members, I believe that I have been very responsive and open to hearing and working with the business community. I know that many in the business community may not see the need for this bill, but I am sure that the vast majority of their workers would tell them, if they felt that they were free to speak openly and candidly, that their families' lives would be immeasurably improved and they would be even better employees if they had reasonable notice of their schedules with fewer last-minute changes. Here to testify in support of the bills, uh, the bill is Mark Ramos, the president of UFCW Local 1428, and Mitch Seaman with the California Labor Federation. I'll turn it over to Mark. Wonderful. Witnesses support. Good morning, Senators. Um, my name is Mark Ramos, president of United Food and Commercial Workers Local 1428 in Claremont, California. Um, I'm here today to speak in support of the bill. Um, I worked in the, the retail grocery industry for 15 years, uh, unionized, um, and we get 60 hours notice of our schedule a week ahead of time. And even with that, that schedule we get on a, a Friday afternoon, we plan our life on that day. We plan our life, we run out, we start making appointments or canceling appointments. It, even with that notice, it causes a lot of somewhat, some, sometimes chaos in our life. Um, whether it's um, babysitting arrangements, uh, or like I said, doctor's appointments, you, you start a scramble. And what I will say is I was fortunate um, that I had that notice. A lot of workers in the retail industry don't have this type of notice. 
Um, I, I could imagine a, a worker riding public transportation for an hour and a half to get to work after having dropped the kids off at school, um, um, uh, at the babysitters, and then showing up to work and then being told, sorry, we don't need you today. Um, or can you come back in four hours? Um, so, so not having a reliable schedule causes chaos not just for the worker, but for everyone along that chain, be it the child, the daycare provider, um, sometimes school. Um, you know, um, a, a worker who, who might be told they're going to work this schedule, um, suddenly having to show up um, and say, no, we're going to keep you later or we'll come back at this time. Well, that worker has bills to pay. They have, they have bills to pay. Um, they, have, they have rent to pay, child care. Um, so it does cause uh, a lot of havoc. So just being able to know what your schedule is ahead of time, um, believe it or not, is a blessing. Um, it's a blessing to the worker, to their family, um, and it just makes sense. The technology already exists. A lot of employers are already using this technology, if not here in California and other parts of the country. Um, and I would also like to say that as far as the, uh, the modification payment, this bill is important to lend stability to workers' lives in the retail industry, um, but without the modification payment, it really means nothing. It's nothing more than words on paper. Um, we have an employer right now who is using a, a test program on writing a, a schedule two weeks out. Because it's a test program, there is no enforcement language in our collective bargaining agreement. So the workers, when I speak to them, and I visited the work sites to have these specific conversations with them, will tell me that, well, it's really no different than our normal schedule because the manager just changes it whenever he wants, so long as he changes it ahead before, he changes it ahead of time when it's supposed to be posted normally, um, and with this employer, that's Friday at 3 p.m. They get their schedule Friday at 3 p.m. and it takes effect um, Monday, at, uh, Sunday, Sunday at midnight, Monday, Monday morning. Um, so without that type of language there, it really doesn't help the worker because if, without a modification payment, the employer being able to change the schedule whenever they want really does nothing for the worker and again just creates more of nothing like i said it's just words on paper it's words on paper and doesn't really have a full effect to lend no one's looking to harm the employers right at the end of the day an employer never having to pay a modification payment would be a great thing but we're also looking that be fair to the employee i think what this bill does is lend fairness to the employee and the employer because the employer ends up with a more stable workforce too when, when employees know their schedule, employees will go somewhere where they know um, that they're going to get a fair wage and they're going to have a reliable schedule. So again, um, thank you um, for letting me speak today. Um, I, uh, I think this bill is really, really important. Um, I, I want to thank Senator Leva um, for this bill. Again, having worked in the retail industry for 15 years, um, it, this is something that's needed because the world is changing. Technology is changing, and we need to make sure that our laws are changing just to, uh, to protect workers in this changing in retail environment. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, Mitch. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Mitch Seaman with the California Labor Federation. Proud to co-sponsor this bill along with the UFCW. Uh, for all the reasons previously stated so well by both the author and the UFCW, but we would also focus a little bit on this concept of flexibility that, that's brought up a lot over the, in the discussion over this bill. For many workers in many industries over the last 30, 20, even 10 years, um, the work environment looks really different than it used to. There was a time when schedules generally were pretty reliable and that was the industry practice. And in too many cases for too many workers, that's really gone. As mentioned, there are just too many workers out there that not only have a don't not only don't have a reliable schedule, there's really no schedule at all. There are many that that don't have end times. The schedule is just start times, and you could be there for an hour, you could be there for eight hours. You have no idea, and as mentioned, it really does make planning your life pretty impossible. Um, and so, what we're trying to do with this bill is preserve that idea of flexibility. It's mentioned a lot that workers go into these industries because they want some sort of flexibility, and usually, what what workers mean when they say that is that they like to be able to take time off to watch their kids or take time off to go get um, supplemental education if that's something that makes sense for them. And oftentimes that means not being able to work nine to five Monday through Friday. It means needing to work nights or weekends. 
that's the kind of flexibility that we're really trying to propose and protect. But it's a different concept from unpredictability, which is really what they've got now, and doesn't allow them to do all the things that they need to do in their lives outside of work so that it all makes sense for them. And that's one of the main reasons that this bill exempts shift trading. So if you're a worker and you do need Saturday off to spend time with your kids, you can go to your employer and say, I need Saturday off. And they can say, well, in that case, you're going to need to find someone to cover your shift, which is, in most cases, exactly what they do right now. So it doesn't, it's not really a departure from current practice. All it does is give the employer an incentive to make sure that they put a schedule out in advance that is predictable that the worker can plan around. And also, as mentioned, it does exempt um, when a worker calls in sick is an issue that's been brought up a lot by the opponents. And so no modification of, no, no modification pay applies to either the worker that called in sick or the one that's called in to replace them. And so what that really leaves as the primary circumstance when this bill would apply are shifts in consumer demand. And so that's when we think modification pay is most important because that's when, for example, if there's a decrease in consumer demand, there's already existing reporting time pay standards, but there's a loophole there where if you don't actually get to work, then there is no reporting time pay for the worker there. So. The, the case that Mark mentioned where workers on public transportation for an hour and a half, if the employer calls them five minutes before they get there, there's no modification pay, there's nothing for that worker. What this bill does is close that loophole so when the worker does get there, there is at least some pay to help them offset the cost of the transportation to get there or the childcare or whatever it may have been. On the other hand, if there's an increase in consumer demand, the school bus of kids that shows up at your restaurant unannounced and the boss calls you up and says, I need you here in 15 minutes, we totally understand that, and we're totally trying to respond to that, and we in no way want to prohibit that, but we would argue that given that the worker is giving up their free time to be there and may be walking away from fixed costs related to childcare or education, that they should be getting a little bit of extra pay to help defray that as well. So we think in those cases, that's when modification pay really makes sense, and that's what we're trying to, to really get at with this bill. And we'd also briefly mention something else that we've seen a lot of in recent years are some real abuses in the idea of on-call shifts, where under current law, it's totally legal to make your workers sit there and have an on-call shift where they have to check their phone every 10 minutes. And if they're not there when the boss calls or texts and says they need to be there, they can be disciplined or fired, and it's totally legal. And so the worker effectively can't go out and live their lives. Um, the law says that it's quote unquote uncontrolled time, so they're not compensated for it, but they really can't go anywhere. They really can't do anything. And so what we're trying to do is deal with some of the worst abuses in that arena as well. And so for those reasons, we'd urge your support. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, having here the t heard the testimony, uh, please, if, we, if anybody's here to uh, any other witnesses in support, uh, please line up here and just state your name and the organization that you're with. would appreciate that. And then we could have the opposition begin to kind of sit in the front if they can. Mm -hmm. But go ahead, uh, supporters, uh, please add on. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, Sam Rodriguez representing the United Food and Commercial Workers State Council, co-sponsors of S SB 878, and a strong supporter of Kyrie Labor's efforts. I just wanted to just, uh, just lay one thing. In June 2014, we commissioned a food labor research center uh, study of over, over 1,000 uh, in-depth interviews, and 50% of all the workers that reported not knowing their schedule at least one week in advance, and almost one-third did, did not even know their schedule four days in advance. Um, more than half were had to be available for on-call and unexpected shifts on the same day. We do have a crisis, and this bill addresses that crisis. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members. My name is Tristan Brown with the California School Employees Association here in support. We urge an I vote. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members. Megan Brightwell on behalf of the California Professional Firefighters in support. Mariko Yoshihara with the California Employment Lawyers Association in support. Jessica Stender with Equal Rights Advocates and the Stronger California Network in strong support. Hola, buenos días. Mi nombre es María Reyes. Vivo en Hayward, California, y apoyo esta ley. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Members, Jessica Bartholo, Western Center on Poverty and Support. Jenya Cassidy, California Work and Family Coalition, in strong support. And um, as a co-parent with somebody with an unpredictable schedule, this is very, very important to me. Hi, I'm Jenna Gary with the Legal Aid Society Employment Law Center, in strong support. Good morning, Katie, with the California Domestic Workers Coalition here in support. 
Hi, my name is Lolita Liedo from the Filipino Workers Center in Los Angeles. We're here to support. Good morning, Josefina Sebastian, my name. Filipino Workers Center, Los Angeles. We support strongly. Mi nombre es Dalet Santiago, eh, soy miembro de Mujeres Unidas Activas de Berkeley uh, y apoyo la, la ley. Hola, soy María Distancia, soy de Oakland, California y yo apoyo esta. Gracias. Buenos días, Raquel Botello de la Colectiva de Mujeres de San Francisco y apoyo esta propuesta. Mi nombre es Carlota Abad, soy de la Colectiva de Mujeres y apoyo esta ley. Blanca Vázquez, from the California Domestic Workers Coalition, in strong support of this bill. Hi, uh, Bethany Renfrey with the State Commission on the Status of Women and Girls in Support. Good morning, I'm Megan Whalen. I'm with the California Domestic Workers Coalition, and I'm in support of this bill. Shane Gussman on behalf of the Teamsters and Unite here in support of the bill. Geraldine Stapleton on behalf of the California National Organization for Women in support. Alex Ricker with the Communication Workers of America Local 9400. Listening to that testimony brought back some terrible memories. I urge and I vote. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any other that want to add on? Uh, seeing none, that we could have the opposition step forward. Please begin. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. Oops. There, let's try that again. Good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. Jennifer Brewer on behalf of the California Chamber of Commerce. We are opposed to SB 878 and have identified it as one of our job killers this year. Um, the bill basically mandates a 28-day work schedule. So the bill says you have to have a 21-day work schedule, and then you have to provide that schedule seven days in advance before the first shift is worked. If you were listening to the testimony of the proponents, that's far beyond what is required in a collective bargaining agreement of only three days or what is being tested right now in collective bargaining agreements, which I believe they said was seven to 14 days. If I, I don't want to misstate it. But it, it far exceeds that. So we're mandating on private sector employers what unionized workforces are not even required to comply with. Um, this is applicable to employers in the retail, restaurant, and grocery industry of any size. So even if you have one employee, you are required to follow this 28-day work schedule notice. Now, while larger employers may have more sophisticated software and may be able to accomplish this, a small employer that doesn't have the uh, financial ability to obtain that sophisticated software will have a much more challenging time adopting a 28-day work schedule notice. To get a 28-day work schedule notice, you have to get the employee's availability probably at least 45 days out, depending on upon your workforce. I don't know if a lot of employees who can predict what they're going to do 45 days out or what their life is going to be like to let them, the employer know what their schedule is going to be so that they can plan accordingly and request the specific shifts that they want. So it's a challenge for employees in the, with a 28-day work schedule as well. I want to talk about the enforcement aspect of this bill for a moment. Uh, as the uh, proponents mentioned, you have this 28-day work schedule, and then if you make any changes to the schedule with less than seven days' notice, you could be subject to modification pay, and certainly there are exceptions in the bill as to when that modification pay wouldn't apply. Now, let's say an employer makes a mistake with regards to whether or not they fall within, within one of those exceptions. Here are the penalties that they face, up to a $4,000 penalty if the modification pay is unwell, unlawfully withheld, up to a $4,000 penalty if somebody is harmed as a result of the lack of modification pay. A $50 penalty by the Labor Commissioner's Office per day if they aren't in compliance with the modification pay. Attorney General enforcement, Labor Commissioner enforcement, a private right of action, and then you have the representative action under the Private Attorney General Act that also includes a $50 per employee per pay period penalty for the first violation, $100 per employee per pay period for the next violation. That's significant enforcement. So if you're an employer and you're faced with an employee who requests a change to their schedule to co accommodate their unpredictability in their life. I don't remember the last time my child gave me a 28-day notice of what their sickness was going to be, or my car let me know 28 days in advance that I was gonna have a flat tire that day. Things happen at the last minute. And if I'm an employee and I come and ask my employer for a change to my schedule with less than seven days notice because of these unpredictable events that occur in individuals' lives, my employer is going to say no, given that list of potential 
penalties and litigation and enforcement and investigation that they face that I just listed. There is no way an employer is going to allow a shift supervisor in an in a environment where there's hundreds of employees to make individual determinations as to whether an employee's request at the last minute falls into one of those listed exceptions. It's just not going to happen. So while I agree that this will achieve predictability in the workplace, it will also achieve absolute lack of flexibility for employees who request time off at the last minute because an employer is simply not going to take the risk that they got it wrong. The other part I wanted to mention, and I appreciate the clarification that was made by the proponents, if an employee does come into work and they are sent home, we already have reporting time pay here in California. It's up to four hours depending upon what your scheduled shift was. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention is with regards to the seven exceptions. The point was, hey, and employees can still uh, shift, switch shifts on their own independently without the employer um, being subject to modification pay. That's true. But if an employee comes to the employer and says, hey, I can't work today, can you help facilitate a switch in my shift? Can you help me find an employee who wants to work the shift? Modification play applies. If an employee has come to the employer and said, hey, I'm only working part time, but geez, I really need additional time because I need to pay, you know, have extra uh, financial obligations and I really need those additional hours of work. If we offer that employee additional hours of work, we get subject to modification pay. So this deters us from actually giving more hours of work to an employee to help them financially when they have come to us and asked us for that, um, for that time. Another point that hasn't been raised, what do we do with a new employee, with a new hire? This requires a 28-day notice of the schedule. We can't schedule them until they have at least seven days notice of their first shift. How do we accommodate that new employee and bring him into the workplace if we already have a set schedule of 28 days out and we can't change that schedule without being threatened for modification pay, enforcement, et cetera? The other point I want to bring up is, yes, some of these issues will, won't trigger modification pay if it falls into the exception, but it's always a part of the labor code. And if we violate any part of this section, of this labor code section, regardless of whether it's subject to modification pay or not, it's still subject to the Private Attorney General Act, which is pretty costly and expensive. So for those reasons, we are opposed to SB 878, and we are very concerned with the implications it will have on employers of all sizes. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, good, good morning members, Mr. Chair. Um, Angie Minetti with the California Retailers Association, also opposed to SB 878. Um, certainly appreciate the dialogue that uh, you and your committee staff has engaged with us on this issue and also that the Senator has engaged with us. Um, but unfortunately, the bill that we have before us has moved in a direction um, completely opposite to what we had anticipated, um, you know, these discussions to result in. Um, uh, as you, as you are all very well aware, this, uh, has been implemented in San Francisco. There was a predictive scheduling ordinance mandating a two-week notice of schedule, and uh, SB 878 goes well beyond that um, notice. Uh, currently, employers in San Francisco are struggling with coping and complying with the ordinance that has been passed. Um, and to take this to a statewide level is certainly premature. Um, Right now in San Francisco, we have employers essentially feeling completely restricted and unable to adjust, unable to make any schedule modifications that fall within the time frames uh, in which we are restricted to. Um, and as a result, employees have been affected as well. Uh, Many employees feel like they are unable to provide their availability four weeks out because of the two-week um, notice requirements. Um, many employees are um, unfortunately denied extra hours because um, any request for additional hours because <coughs> those additional requests for hours could set off the entire um, schedule that we are trying to predict ahead of time. And so if we are now mandated to provide a 20 day notice uh, that essentially will have a, an extreme ripple effect and force employers and employees to try and make these projections of consumer demand um, much, much farther ahead of time. Um, unfortunately, our industry, um, our industry is uh, very reactive and inherently um, reactive to consumer demand. As a result, there are many circumstances that are that fall 
very much outside of a retailer's control. Uh, I understand that the senator has included seven exceptions in the bill to try and accomplish to um, to try and accomplish a. a I guess projecting these scenarios, but unfortunately, there are scenarios that just cannot be projected or anticipated by employers, um, and for that reason, we we continue to remain opposed. Uh, SB eight seven eight would require us to to essentially engage in extensive document tracking of schedule changes. Um, right now. Uh, Right now, as the bill is written, we would have to maintain records up to up to four years. Um, we would have to keep track of any doc doctor notes that are provided to us by employees to ensure that any excuses or schedule changes that are made are very well within the seven um, exemptions uh, written out in the bill. Um, you know, unfortunately, that's not something that our employers are able to do and forces us to essentially uh, enact archaic document tracking for our scheduling, which, you know, right now our industry is very innovative. We have many industries and many retail retailers essentially implementing scheduling software that allows uh, employees to log on online, to trade shifts, to sign on to additional shifts, to see, um, you know, uh, available, available shifts. And uh, the way this bill is written certainly pushes us, um, you know, into a backwards movement. So uh, strongly urge your opposition to this. And um, we'll certainly continue to try and work with the author um, to resolve our outstanding concerns. Thank you. Thank you so much for your testimony. Uh, we would like to continue with uh, the opposition to please uh, step forward, state your name, and the organization you represent. Sure. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. My name is Javier Gonzalez with the California Restaurant Association. If you might indulge me, indulge me with a few extra seconds, just uh, as Mr. Rodriguez did earlier. Um, the the uh, bill requires three weeks scheduling, which will lock in employers and employees to rigid schedules. Uh, one of the things that cornerstones for our industry is the flexibility that we provide to our employees. There are employees that are looking to pick up additional hours and shifts. This bill would not prohibit, in essence, employers from offering those extra hours because of the uh, penalties that the employer will face in terms of modification pay. Um, the other thing I'd like to add is that it fails to take into account external factors such as a large party that shows up, you know, you have a little league team that shows up to your restaurant um, with very little notice and you need to be able to um, adjust your staffing needs in order to be able to accommodate the customers. Also, the weather's a huge factor. Uh, you may be out in the Santa Monica Pier and your restaurant may be fogged in and all of a sudden you don't have customers coming in and you need to be able to adjust your operations accordingly or if you are in the desert area and you have an outdoor patio seating area, you need to be able to uh, adjust because you will have customers who don't want to be sitting outside in the in the heat. So, um, for those reasons and the reasons previously stated by Ms. Uh, Barrera from the Chamber of Commerce, we are opposed to SB 878. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, members, Chris McKaylee on behalf of the Civil Justice Association in opposition due to the excessive enforcement mechanisms. Good morning, Tim Schmelzer representing Wine Institute. Uh, as written, this bill uniquely impacts the uh, many hundreds of family-owned wineries whose principal source of revenue is through their tasting room, and they just don't have the ability to comply with this complex law. So we oppose for this reason. Fred Main on behalf of the Chambers of Commerce Alliance of Ventura and Santa Barbara County in opposition. Nicole Rice, California Manufacturers and Technology Association in opposition for the reasons that our manufacturers are now starting to do these small boutique type of retail operations in which this bill would cover and the other measure actually exempted that because it had a, a threshold for employees and also because of the breadth of the measure. It's also including things like cafeterias that we have on our facilities and things of that nature. So for those reasons and other status, we are opposed. Good morning, Nicolina Hernandez on behalf of the California Travel Association and the Retail Industry Leaders Association. Opposed, thank you. Aaron Moreno on behalf of the California Growth Association in opposition would also like to point out in addition to the comments made previously, uh, the bill does not apply to online uh, grocers. Uh, we believe that's a competitive disadvantage and you know, just something we'd like to point out to the committee moving forward. Thank you to the Senator for having discussion with us and hope to keep on having those. Thanks. Absolutely. 
Yolanda Benson representing the California Asian Pacific Chamber of Commerce on behalf of small business. We are, do not have faceless HR departments. We are <clears throat> the face and this provides less flexibility for our employees. Randy Pollock on behalf of the International Franchise Association in Opposition. Ken DeVorth, the National Federation of Independent Business in Opposition. Mike Dillon, the California Ski Industry in Opposition. Moira Top on behalf of Orange County Business Council in Opposition. Good morning. Russell Nowak on behalf of the California Independent Oil Marketers Association in Opposition. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, Louis Brown on behalf of the California Association of Nurseries and Garden Centers in opposition. Thanks so much. All right, we've heard uh, testimony and support and in opposition. We're going to go ahead and open it up to committee members if they have any questions that they want to <coughs> ask of the author. Vice Chair, Chairman Stone. Thank you. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Good to see you. You too. Um, can you talk about uh, the, the the provisions and uh, with labor contracts that have been, uh, I guess, I've been working on three-day uh, scheduling and um, and how your bill is, is so significantly different? Uh, does it does it not work for the um, the union grocery stores and union uh, contracts? And and here we're we're looking to put it into the small business and large businesses in the state. Can you? Uh, Absolutely. I think that the union contracts right now with the um, schedule being posted on a Friday or a Saturday and the worker knowing then what they'll start working a couple days later works very well for the employer. I think it does not work very well for the employee. We have people who have been in the industry, I say we when I was with the UFCW, workers who have been around for 25, 30 years and they have been conditioned to live their lives one week at a time. Yeah. And this was something that uh, was always an issue, was always a problem. Problem. And I believe that not only union workers would benefit uh, knowing when their schedules are going to be, but non-union workers as well up and down the state. And, and I would just say that as we've seen the economy rebound um, or somewhat rebound, these jobs that the, the economy has rebounded with are mostly retail jobs, part-time jobs, and when workers can't plan their lives, it doesn't help any of us. And a lot of this is about knowing when you can pay your Edison bill or knowing when you can buy groceries. Because when you don't know what you're working, you really don't know when you can do that. So will your bill then uh, preempt uh, labor contracts and this will be applicable now to... It would cover everyone, yes. It would cover everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what about the argument that, uh, that it's going to create uh, a lot of rigidity, uh, maybe even some contention, contention between employers, employees that doesn't even exist maybe today, and you may have employees that want to work more hours to pay those Edison bills, and many of them are saying, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to deal with the, the paperwork, we don't want to deal with the possible sanctions, we don't want to p deal with the potential litigation. Um, are, are we not, in some aspects, hurting the employees that want to work more? And are, are you flexible to working with the opposition to? Well, I have been very flexible working with yeah. the opposition. Uh, when when I first decided that I wanted to do this bill, because this is something that's very personal to me since I yeah. lived it for so many years, um, I met with the retailers uh, on numerous occasions and asked for their suggestions, met with the chamber, held a stakeholder meeting with about 45 uh, folks who are now um, still all opposed to the bill, and said, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. How do we get there? But when I don't receive anything or any ideas or any suggestions, then I am left to just do what I think is right. So I will continue to be open. And I, I was one of those people in the stores that said, I want extra hours. I call me in, do that. But not having any suggestions from business, I'm not sure how to work with them. But we'll remain open. And the issue is important enough that I think we can get there. But it uh, has to be a two-way conversation. I understand and I appreciate that uh, your door is open and um, and I've had a, a great working relationship with you. We talked yesterday that we, sometimes we agree on some issues right. and sometimes we disagree and uh, right. at least we can all say we, we try to do it always in, in, in being professional and, and courteous and uh, and sometimes we get a little bit overzealous and <laughs> cut people off and we don't inadvertently try to do but but I do want to just make a, t a few a few comments. Absolutely. Obviously, I, I can't su support the bill. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm concerned, especially when you look at the cross-section of opposition. I mean, we've heard from 
so many different uh, industries that are, are, are struggling uh, today. Um, we know that California's reputation um, in commerce and business is uh, certainly not at the top of the list. We, we, we have the dubious distinction of, of having high, highest taxes, high workman's comp rates, um, generous sick leave, uh, I think better than anywhere in the country. We've done things that I support, such as gender equality for pay. Um, but this is going to be a, a very difficult pill, no pun intended, to swallow uh, for our businesses. Um, and it seems as though it's just going to decrease the flexibility. And it's so complicated that, uh, uh, especially for the small business guy, which I am, I mean, I, I employ about 15 people. Um, I don't know if I'll, I, I don't think I'll fall under this because I don't have 50% or more in, in, in taxable sales. Most of mine are, are, are pharmaceuticals. But the bulk of, of businesses in the state of California country are small businesses and their ability to comply and to face the sanctions and these penalties of $4,000 uh, could, could bankrupt some of these small businesses. So I worry about the flex, flexibility. I worry about the investigative cost. I worry about uh, litigation. Um, and, and trying to predict, um, especially restaurant-type uh, businesses, hotel businesses, if you get a, a convention in, if you get something that's unexpected and you get a surge, um, it, it's, it, it could be difficult to, to adjust those schedules to increase commerce for these businesses that are, are, are certainly uh, struggling. So um, I worry about the violations in, in the labor code that we're talking about. And just, it seems as though we also deal every year with the unintended consequences of bills that have good intentions, but unfortunately we discover later that they, they, they're, they're very problematic. And uh, um, I just uh, hope that uh, we can somehow make this uh, more uh, palatable uh, to businesses. And, and, and let me just say that uh, you know, I've always felt that um, um, being uh, an employer and offering jobs, it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to get a job. It's a privilege. And uh, the, the, the businesses hire people to, uh, to make their business successful. And, uh, and the best way that you reward an employee, at least I found in my businesses, is to, to pay them well and to, and, and with my businesses, I've always made the um, the assertion that family comes first. You know, if something happens with your family, you know, if you've got to take time off, by golly, take the time off because when I get a big order for, you know, 3,000 units of a, of a medication and I need my employees to work at night, and they are, they're happy to do it. So uh, I want to make sure that we don't tip the balance of employee-employer relationships um, that are working uh, in communities and um, and yet we have now all of these uh, business organizations coming forward and basically uh, waving red flags. Um, I, I can't support the bill today. I look forward to hopefully you taking some amendments that will make this more palatable. Uh, appreciate you uh, hearing my comments and I look forward to hearing my other colleagues. Thank you. Thank you.